Psoriasis is a chronic systemic inflammatory disease which targets the skin and the joints. It's been reported that psoriasis increases the risk of developing metabolic syndrome, including obesity, dyslipidemia, diabetes, and hypertension. Well, we've got a panel of experts today to provide an understanding of these comorbid conditions and discuss the causal relationship between these two conditions, among other things. We're also going to dive deeper into the biologics used to treat psoriasis and review their efficacy in patients who also present with metabolic syndrome. I'm Dr. Peter Salgo. I'm a professor of medicine and anesthesiology at Columbia University Vangelos College of Physicians and Surgeons and associate director of surgical intensive care at New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. Joining me today are Dr. Joel Gelfand, professor of dermatology and epidemiology, vice chair of clinical research and medical director in the Dermatology Clinical Studies Unit and director of the Psoriasis and Phototherapy Treatment Center at the University of Pennsylvania Perlman School of Medicine in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Dr. Peter Donnell, currently the medical director. He's also held multiple previous positions with Blue Cross affiliates in North Central United States. And Dr. Stephen Feldman, Professor of Dermatology at Wake Forest School of Medicine in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Thank you all so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be on the same panel with you. Why don't we start with the, the basic stuff? I'll ask the obvious question. What is psoriasis? Anybody want to jump in on that? Oh, with pleasure. I knew you would. Yeah. <laughs> psoriasis is um, an immune disease. It causes red scaly lesions of the skin. And I've been caring for patients uh, with psoriasis for over 25 years now. And I, I don't have a really great definition for it. Uh, it's, you know, like diabetes. That's you don't have enough insulin action. In clinical studies, a dermatologist says that's psoriasis. You know, back even in the 1960s when I was a, a kid, I remember this TV commercial talking about the heartbreak of psoriasis. And even then it was, you know it when you see it. Did you ever see that commercial? Uh, I'm very much aware of it. You know, and times have not changed that much. I think that despite all the progress we've made in psoriasis care, uh, advanced understanding how disease works. Uh, there's still a lot of stigma associated with this disease. Uh, we recently published a paper uh, surveying patients, uh, surveying people in the United States, and roughly a third of people in the U.S. think that psoriasis is contagious, uh, would not want to shake hands with someone who has visible psoriasis, really? things of that nature. So our patients face a lot of burden and stigma in society trying to deal with this chronic disease. And people also, I think the lay public, believes that it's usually uh, just your elbows, mm -hmm. and that's it, some sort of skin disease. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth, right? Right, it, it can uh, affect the scalp. Not commonly the face, but it can be on the face. The elbows, as you point out, the nails, um, the knees, the belly button. Um, at the lower portion of the back, yeah, <laughs> it can be all over. Or okay. it could just be limited areas. All right, well, Genital involvement is another common area of involvement that people don't talk about. Well, if you can't catch it, how do you get it? Is it, is it genetic? I mean, do, or do, you, do you inherit a tendency to get this disease? Yeah, so, so of all the complex genetic traits, psoriasis is probably one of the most heritable. So if you think about things like uh, type 2 diabetes or Crohn's disease or multiple sclerosis, have all those psoriasis as a strongest genetic component to it, uh, these complex multigenic diseases. Um, about 40% about forty of people have psoriasis while the family history of psoriasis in, in their family as well. Um, and that's important for people to be aware of. This oftentimes people are worried about, you know, well, my children develop psoriasis. And it's about a 20% lifetime risk of someone who has psoriasis passing it on uh, to their children. So so that's, a, that's a fairly significant risk, it is. frankly. Um, and how does it progress? I mean, does it start with one plaque, one lesion, and then spread? Or does it just, is it multicentric often from the beginning? What's the clinical progression of this thing? Well, you know, it's so variable. So what the challenge is with psoriasis, what's so difficult for patients. You know, it's often hard to know uh, who's going to have fairly limited disease that will stay limited for their life. Uh, and this is a disease that could start at any stage of life. It could start in infancy uh, or late adolescence, early 20s. Uh, I've had a patient develop psoriasis when she was in her mid-80s when her sister died. So oftentimes a major stressful life event. Yeah, I was going to say, I've heard that from patients. You know, everything was great, and then something big happened in my life, and then everything exploded. Yeah, and so we know within gene with genetic susceptibility, then people are prone to having their immune system uh, recognize uh, proteins that are made by the skin, by the keratinocytes and melanocytes, okay. uh, that are completely normal, and then the body reacts in an autoimmune fashion to those proteins. Okay. Pete, um, Peter, there's a lot of um, dogma about progression and all, and I think it's just a very hard thing to study uh, 
Joel, you've done some great work on progression in eczema, showing that the dogma just doesn't really fit. And so we make these claims about the progression of the disease. I don't know that we have any really great studies, um, at least not here in the United States, of, of, of what happens and what the progression typically well, is. Well, instead of saying we understand how it progresses, at least we can ask, how do you assess how bad it is? What are the tools you've got at your disposal? Well, you know, I think that it's really a clinical assessment in terms of how bad the disease is. Uh, there's research assessments we use, but then there's also clinical assessments we use. And there's two perspectives. One is the objective doctor's perspective, uh, how extensive is the disease. Uh, classically, we think that when psoriasis affects more than 10% of your body surface area, that's considered to be severe disease, if you okay. will. Uh, but special sites are important as well. There's some areas that we know cause a lot of burden for our patients. Uh, the scalp is very hard to treat with this traditional topical medications, for example. Uh, the nails are visible and often very disabling for patients, or the palms and soles can be very disabling. Uh, the genital area can be very disabling for patients. So you could imagine a scenario where someone could have very localized psoriasis, but it could be severe because it really impacts the patient's well-being, their quality of life, their social interactions, things of that nature.